Good evening, everybody. We're coming to you, and we're going to make a little bit of a different kind of video. Uh, this is a video where uh, the places we're going to be is actually taken over a period of a couple of weeks. This is not one day or one trip. And uh, we're going to take you to four North Carolina towns and show you how they uh, decorate for Christmas. So uh, the way this came about was that we were going to do a separate video on the towns of Silva and Dillsborough because we had heard and read that they really do Christmas lights up nicely. And when we got over there, there really wasn't much to see. Uh, but Silva did have one place we hated not to bring in, not to show you. It was the Jackson County Courthouse. So we thought, how can we include that without doing a whole video on Silva? Because there just wasn't much else to put in it. So anyway, what we decided to do was do four towns in North Carolina. We're going to show you uh, the Jackson County Courthouse first in Silva. And then we're going to show you some other towns. And uh, I guess that's about it. You got anything you want to say? Um, I want to say... Uh Make sure and watch to the end because we yeah. are saving the best. We're saving for the, the last. best for last. The one we're putting last on here is called Christmas Town USA for a reason. Mm -hmm. So if the other ones seem boring, just hold on. It'll get good at the end. So thank you all for watching. Stay with us. Okay, folks, we are over in the Smoky Mountain town of Silva, North Carolina. Now, our plan was to drive through the downtown areas of Silva and Dillsboro and hopefully bring you some nice Christmas lights. However, after driving through downtown Silva, there's not a lot to bring you except for one spot, and we're going to show that to you. I am going to show you here in just a moment the Jackson County Courthouse here in Silva, and it's done up very nice for Christmas. And apparently, like Shaughnessy said, that's where this town puts all their effort is in the courthouse. Okay, now this is what I was talking about. Basically, the downtown area simply has clear lights wrapped around the poles and not much else. So, but as you pan around here, the Jackson County Courthouse is pretty impressive. So let me back out of that just a little bit. You can see a lot of the little small decorated trees right there on both sides of the steps going up to the Jackson County Courthouse. Let's walk over here and look at this memorial. Pardon the reflection on the stone there, but Jackson County dedicates this memorial to all veterans living and deceased who honorably serve their country that freedom may reign. Uh, veterans Day, November 11th, 2007. Again, we are in the town of Silva, North Carolina. Let me move over here, more centralized. Now, Shaughnessy is going to resist you on her heels. I thought she was going to change clothes, or not clothes, but shoes. Uh, Shaughnessy is going to kick those heels off and show us how fast she can run up those steps. <laughs> but she's going to do it in heels. Yeah, that'd be yeah, better. That'd go, be go right ahead. Yeah. Take off. One. Two, That's three. Okay. okay. I don't really want to bust my teeth out. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you change into your boots? Well, I just thought we were walking right over here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so tonight's small town is just up above our house, about 30 minutes from where we live. We are in the small mountain town of Blowing Rock, North Carolina, in Watauga County. 
Um, we live in the county just next to this one in Caldwell County. So we come up here quite a bit during the summer. Uh, but we're going to feature Blowing Rock tonight in our uh, Christmas Lights tour of the small towns in North Carolina. So um, it's not a big town, but we're just going to walk through. They have some lights. It's not, you know, um, a whole lot, but there's still some nice ones in some areas. So we're going to start down here at the end of town, just walk through and even show you some of the stores. A lot of them I've noticed are closed um, tonight, and that's kind of surprising because it's only like 7.30 on a Saturday night. But... Um, I will say it's just really an overall wretched night here in town. It's uh, usually this time of year because of the elevation of Blowing Rock, there's some snowfall on the ground. There's no snow, it's just foggy, as you can probably tell by the video. It's very dense fog and temperatures in the, probably the low 40s. So, we're just going to take you around and show you a little bit of the lights. There's a little, uh, this is actually off of the main street here. Monkeys, ladies' shoes and accessories, and Oliver's on Main, and it's a boutique. And it's like some men's wear stores down there. Now, I honestly don't recall if we've ever walked down in here before or not, but I don't think I've ever noticed. I just haven't noticed. Like, yeah, look, and we've been to Blowing Rock hundreds of times, but here's a men's wear store. And yeah, it was actually the the decorations that kind of caught our attention. Here's Mountain Time Amish Wholesale. I got jams and jellies and furniture. Yeah, locally made jams, jellies, outdoor and indoor furniture. Wow. So if you need a jar of jelly and a, and a bed, this is the place to come to get it. Here we go. All right, and this store here, call, it's called Serves You Right. It's gifts, collectibles, and essentials for home and entertaining. And it literally does look like they have a little bit of everything in there. So if you're in Blowing Rock and you're wanting to find a souvenir or a gift or looks like a good variety of stuff in there, might be a place to consider. Oh, I'm, didn't I, I know something that's shining in my eye when I walked by. It was this thing. You know, that's, that's one of those star shower things. Say cheese. That's the name of the, it's a little gourmet sandwich cafe. Now, that's a tiny little thing. I never knew that place was here, folks. I never. I don't think we've ever walked down in here. I don't think we have. So let me just let you see the menu here. That might be something a little bit off the main street that you might want to consider. We got them a grilled cheese, ham and cheese. Uh, there's probably too much of a glare to read that. Let me see an angle. Egg and cheese. All the lights just went off behind me. I don't know if you can read that or not. What's the name of this place? It's Say Cheese. Say Cheese. It looks like you can get grilled cheese and some maybe some soup to dip it in there. Caution, ice possible on sidewalks and parking lot. That's, yeah, that's not a thing tonight, but it often is up here. Back on the main street now, and across the street, there's some, uh, I guess, restaurants. Again, I'm, I apologize for the fog. I know it's tough to see. We hit this about five miles back coming up the mountain. Wasn't, fo wasn't foggy back down at our house. We have had four straight days of drizzle and cloud cover. We've not seen the sun in about four days. But here's some of the stores that are down in that little area. And of course, if you need to know what time it is. I'm not sure what this store's called, but looks like they got a lot of antique looking things. Winwood Antiques. Look at those old. Copper. Yeah. Kettles, pots, yeah. Huh. Pretty neat. 
Actually, a lot of these stores, it's been a few years since we've actually just gotten out and walked the streets. We drive through here all the time. Yeah. But it's been a few years since we've gotten out and just walked. And a lot of these stores, wasn't aware of. Here's a pottery store, Bolick and Traditions Pottery. Again, a lot of stuff's closed right now. It's still very early on a Saturday night. But here's an art gallery, crown gallery. Unique gifts and home furnishings. What do we got under here? The Brass Exchange. The Brass Exchange. That's a neat one. I've been in there several times. I got a lot of nice In here? Stuff. When did yeah. you go in here? Like after we've been camping and stuff like that, we've come in here. I've never been in it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember you ever going in it. Mm -hmm. Where was that? Maybe in Kilwin's getting us a Probably. milkshake. <laughs> Okay, now here's something. We just turned off the main street and walked down the little side street here, and we got a lot of colorful lights right here. A lot of towns, I don't know why, they tend to just go with clear lights. I like color myself. Yeah. I got nothing wrong with some clear lights. I just, you know, when a whole town's just clear, it gets kind of monotonous. But This uh, is the Hemlock Inn. The Hemlock Inn, okay. So if you're going to come up here around Christmas, I would recommend staying at the Hemlock Inn just because of the way they decorate. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I didn't even see yeah, they it. they don't have it lit there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the Hemlock Inn. Uh, don't know anything about them. Never seen one of their rooms. Don't know what they cost, but very pretty. Here's the outside of the rooms again. Never been in one. Yeah, green doors with red wreaths on them, red berry wreaths. Got a little um, shelter here, gazebo. And right across the street from the Hemlock is the Homestead Inn, and they don't do too shabby of a job either. Two little quaint little places, just really just a stone's throw from the main street, but off of Main Street, you know. I wonder if that's what is that, goldfish or koi or whatever? Right, and they got fish in there? Ain't that what that is? It is, yeah. I guess they're cold and don't swim around much. I'd say in the summertime that's a fountain. Yeah. I guess they're okay. I'm sure they won't leave them in there for long. Customers only, no turnarounds. Sure, they won't mind if we walk through. Yeah, better to get forgiveness than permission, or easier to get forgiveness than permission. So, let's do it. Yeah, they got nice decorations too. And I really like the icicles hanging from the gazebo here. All right, let's walk back up to the main street. But I'll tell you what, either one of these places, you're just off the main street. I mean, you can walk to it in, what, a minute and a half? Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, and either one of these are just really what you would call maybe quaint. Yeah. Um, off the main street, but close enough to it that you're very convenient to it. Just a little walk up this hill here. Here's a store called Wild Birds Galore and more. Reminds me of a sled I used to have when I was a kid. Mine was something flyer. Can't remember what it was called. No, clipper. It's called a Yankee Clipper or something like that. I think that's what it was. It looked like that. Looks like they got garden flags. It's a lot of little neat outdoorsy stuff. Christmas in Blowing Rock, a perfect present. Mm -hmm. 
There we go, right there. Y'all know I love those red trucks. Although I like that green one at Carowinds too. That's on our Carowinds video, if you haven't seen that yet. Okay, now here are fine oriental rugs. Put in the comments section, we can see the price on it. What do you think one of those rugs would cost? What do you say that is? Maybe three, I don't know. Is it three feet across lengthwise? Maybe? Well, three or four feet by what? Two and a half. Yeah, something like that. <coughs> Give us your best guess what those things cost. For one rug. Hold on, say that again. I cut the camera off. Yeah, two by three. Or two by three. Okay, yeah, two by three rugs. I don't know if they're all the same price, but we're just talking about uh, that one. Finley House. You know what? I'm going to do y'all a favor and myself and not even try to pronounce that bottom word because I'm sure I'll get corrected. And I'm pretty sure I'll get it wrong. So, I would guess couture. Or couture. But... Chandelier. All I know is when it's got words like that, I can't afford it. Oh, yeah, look at that chandelier. Here's something that's open. What is it? It looks like a, a sta eating establishment of some kind. It looks like a nice restaurant, too. Six pence? Six pence. It's actually a, be a nice place to eat. Sunset Teas and Hattery. I'm going to go on a limb and say they got t-shirts and pants. I guess they have the downstairs too. Apparently it's closed now, but it looks like they have a downstairs too. Oh yeah. So they got, you can get you a snow sled. Get you some little decorative items. Birdhouse. Another red truck. Another red truck. This is Revolution Clothiers. Men's and women's gifts. Again, most of the stores up here, they just have just a variety of everything. It would be hard to describe. Got a snowman right here and some candy canes. Uh, very nice. That's a bicycle. Over there is the Martin House. I don't know what that is. This is some kind of gift shop, I guess. I don't know. You know what that is over there? I don't. Can't even see what's inside. We were actually going to go in that Sunset Tees and Hattery, but some people come out and said they were closing. So we decided not to prolong their evening. Now this is one of my favorite places in Blowing Rock, uh, is Kilwin's Homemade Ice Cream. You see those in a lot of places. You see one in Gatlinburg. Uh, I don't think Pigeon Forge has one. Blowing Rock has what? two. <laughs> have one here and out by the outlets on 321. Of course, Kilwin's is known for fudge and their ice cream. They're not cheap, but they got good stuff. Are we going to Kilwin's for anything? We just had a family oh, gathering a few hours ago and we ate our fill of barbecue and banana pudding. And My sister made her Christmas treats and candies for us. Yeah, so food right now is the last thing on our mind, mm -hmm. but it is smelling good out here. Good. Yeah, uh, her sister's husband, brother-in-law, he smoked up pork shoulder. Had, had what, 20 people there tonight? 20? Yeah, probably. More than 20, maybe. Here we go. we got a little sports store here. We've got... Of course, Appalachian State, this is, uh, Appalachian State University is only about eight miles from here. Um, yeah, we won't mention that team down there on the left. NC State Wolfpack. That's my favorite ACC basketball team. Over here, we got a, let's see, Georgia hat on the right, NC State. That, well, we'll leave that light blue team nameless as well. I'll leave that team nameless as well, too. Huh, we got a Tennessee spatula. 
uh, that other team spatula, and then Buffalo Bill's spatula. Huh. Now right here is the Spice and Tea Exchange. Our first one that we ever went in there, uh, those was where? In Dahlonega, Georgia. Dahlonega, Georgia. What, two years? No, last year. Last year. Yeah, last year at Christmas. Loved it. Uh, they have one in Pigeon Forge in the back of the village. We actually have a membership there now, don't we, where we get discounts when we buy so much. We didn't know they had one here in Blowing Rock. That's good to know. Uh, the Spice and Tea Exchange is a great store. They have different flavors of seasonings, salts, even sugars. We bought a butterscotch flavored sugar there. That was good. Yeah. And teas. All these Did we get a peppermint one for, for Christmas? Did we end up buying that? No. Got, got a fake turkey rub here. Or fake turkey. Actually, they must sell the turkey rub for brining it. And then there's little fake prime rib. Yeah. I'll tell you what, anytime you're where there's a spice and tea exchange, you ought to go in there. They have got, oh, they got like cheese powders too. You can get like a feta cheese powder, which mm -hmm. I love. I add that to macaroni and cheese. That really gives your macaroni, just even a craft macaroni and cheese out of the box, that gives it a good zing. It does. Put it on popcorn. All right, here is the boutique. I've seen several boutiques here in town. Got a nicely lit up polar bear. Here's a little home and garden decor uh, and art. Like I say, there's such variety in these stores here. They all have their windows decorated so nicely, too. Yes, they do. Now, our youngest son, who y'all have never seen on a video because he won't allow us to, his name's Tyler. He loves Yoda. Anything Yoda. When he was a, a little boy at Disney World, he bought him a Yoda. I always called it a Yoda doll. That made him mad. He called it an action figure. But, but he would go around with that Yoda and he would take its arm and slap everybody with it. How many times were we hit by Yoda growing up? A lot. Except he changed his name to Bob. Bob. He called him Bob. <laughs> and then, I don't know why. But and he, then where he had slapped or used that one to slap so much, his arm started breaking. So we yeah. bought another one and his name was Bobby. <laughs> yeah, he named the next one Bobby. That's when we went back to Disney World. So even now, Tyler is um, 25 years old and he's still. Like Yoda, so. Star Wars anything. Okay, so now we're gonna go across the street and go into the town of Blowing Rock, North Carolina Memorial Park. And as you can see, they've got the little shelter gazebo there all decked out. So we're gonna go up there and walk around the park for a few minutes. The final part of our tour of Blowing Rock is we're going to ride through the Chatola Mountain Resort area. They usually have some lights up at Christmas. Haven't been up here in several years actually uh, and driven out here so we'll have to stop at the gate. Uh, they do stop you and ask you what you're uh, going in for so hopefully they'll still let us do it and find out. Does. Usually we have to kind of explain it, but I don't really see a lot of decorations out here right now. Used to have them all along the lake. On the well, maybe that's so foggy we'll see them when we get there. Yeah, here we go. There's the ones on the <coughs> lake here. Just a string of clear ones. Yeah, here we go. <coughs> Sorry again for the wipers, don't have a choice. I'm going to try to turn them off for a few minutes and see if we can get by with that.
This is what, like a little, was it a timeshare? Probably something like that. <clears throat> I think they have a pretty nice restaurant out here. And this is really about all of it there is. We turn around right up here. But they just have it decorated nice by the lake. Yeah. This is the Bob. This is the Bob Timber Lake Inn at Shatola Resort. Again, just a foggy night. I do apologize. We're here at the Shatola Resort here in Blowing Rock. North Carolina. Here's the restaurant. This is a bomb timber lake inn at Chateaua. It's very nice. Their fire area. Okay, and I know it's hard to tell, but this is actually a lake out here uh, or a pond. It's just not wanting to focus through all this fog. There, it's trying to. I'll try to go slow back through here. My wife's actually holding the steering wheel, so if we end up in the lake. Then... <laughs> I'm trying to go at very slow speeds right now. I probably should zoom out just a little bit. That might help. Speed limit's 12. We're doing about four. So we're not going to get a speeding ticket going through here. That's for sure. See two swans back over there in the background. Candy cane. When I was a little boy, I actually got to come up here and trout fish. I did pretty well that day. I want to say, uh, Caught five or six rainbows in a pretty short time. Okay, folks, this pretty much concludes our tour of Blowing Rock. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next town. We are here in another town of our four town tour of Christmas lights here in a small town, North Carolina. Right now we are in the city of Lenore, North Carolina. Now, um, this is not a place we would have thought to do Christmas lights. In fact, we only live 10 miles from here. This is the county seat of Caldwell County, which we live in. We live in another town in Caldwell County, but um, Lenore would have been one of the bottom places for us to think about to come see Christmas lights, but we are here and Shaughnessy is going to tell us why we're here. A lady that I work with said that um, downtown Lenore has got a bunch of new Christmas lights. She said they're really pretty. So we were like, okay, we'll go check it out and see what it's Yeah, like. and I was not optimistic. So when we pulled in, it's like, wow, yeah. this is nice. Yeah, so we're going to be showing you those. Now, the good thing about this one, this is not going to be a long video because... Uh, 
It's kind of just in the square. Well, Lenore's downtown isn't much. Yeah, yeah, the lights are all concentrated in one area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's kind of a place you can stand that's centrally located and see all of them, but there are actually some really nice ones. So mm -hmm. um, I was just going to drive through and look and see if it was worth doing a video, but I think it is. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, like I say, this is one of the last places we ever would have thought of to feature for Christmas lights, but because of what we were told, mm -hmm. um, we decided to just drive uptown and check it out, and we're going to show it to you, so stay tuned. Before we walk down to the square, I do want to show you all this monument here. Um, this is officers in Caldwell County, uh, law enforcement officers that uh, were killed in the line of duty, and over here are their names. Uh, only one of these do I actually remember the situation. And that's the bottom one, uh, Deputy Adam Klutz. He was killed in a domestic dispute. He was a young guy. I don't know. I think he was early 20s, and uh, he was called out to a domestic dispute where a man, I think, was abusing his wife. And uh, the man had gone up into the woods, and the deputies pursued him. And uh, the man stepped out and shot Officer Klutz and then killed himself. Um, right afterwards, very tragic situation. But I do want to show you all that and remember those that gave their lives in the line of duty, uh, protecting our communities. Um, and I want to say that because we're living in a day where law enforcement is uh, much maligned. And while there are obviously bad people in every profession, uh, I'm glad for good law enforcement officers. Appreciate it for what they do. So I wanted to show you all that. So let's walk downtown here. One of the stores here in downtown Lenore is a ranch and cattle company, and I think that's a butcher shop. Looks like they have some hats for sale there too. But notice up there in the left corner, they sell the F1 Wagyu beef, which is really supposed to be some good stuff. I want to say that Wagyu beef is uh, primarily from Japan, but I think there's some, they grow it in Australia too, raise the cattle that produce that, but it's supposed to be very well marbled, very tender, some of the best quality beef there is. So you can actually get that here in Lenore. And here's another place I want to show you right quickly. It's called the Shaking Dog. And the reason they call it that is because you can get some good shakes and some good hot dogs there. Uh, we have one of these in Granite Falls too. There are two branches. Uh, so that's very handy to have one near where we live as well. But they're not open right now, but you can go in there and get all kinds of uh, Neat type. They got several kinds of hot dogs. They even Especially have a, hot dogs. They even have like a what's called an Arizona dog with a Southwest flair to it. Um, a lot of good flavors of milkshakes. So we really enjoy. We go enjoy going there from time to time. The one near us. Get milkshakes, banana splits, ice cream. Stanley's out looking at lights tonight. He's having a ball. Last Stanley's fixing to leave to go back to California. This is probably his last adventure with us. Yeah. Kind of sad. We've grown a little bit attached to him. We have. He behaves pretty well for the most part. Yeah, he does. But we got people waiting on the sleigh, so let's move on. <laughs> Once you go down the streets, it kind of messes up as far as lights, but right here in the square, pretty nice looking, pretty nice. And it 
it looks like Flat Stanley is about to fly away. Guess y'all can make him out. There's Stanley. All right, I've got a couple of businesses I want to mention to you here if you ever happen to be in Lenore for whatever reason. Um, we got the 1841 Cafe here. We've eaten here one time. They got really good burgers, um, sandwiches, chicken tenders, just a, a varied menu. And in the warm weather, they got an outside seating area here. You can sit under, um, looks like something you'd see down at the beach in Florida or somewhere, but you can sit under those. Uh. I want to say 1841. Isn't that when the building was built? I think it is, yeah. So it's very old. Yeah, so if that is, I think that is the story behind that. 1841 Cafe used to be the Bernhardt Siegel Hardware and Furniture Company. And that's the building that this is in now. And they are open. Let me get their hours. I wish they had a menu out here, but they don't. So uh, I think they're closed now. But they're open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 2.30. And there's actually somebody walking around in there. Uh, closed 2.30 to 5, then they open back up for supper at 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So, that's, uh, it says temporary adjustment because of being short-staffed. Now, I want to mention a place to y'all over here. We've only been once. We are going to go back. Uh, let me cross over here. This place here, Aries Ice Cream. Now, uh, we came there one night. Uh, it, it is run by a Mexican couple. Um, and we uh, got I got the Mexican street corn in a cup it wasn't on a cob, it was in a cup I liked it better that way, it made less of a mess and they have all kinds of ice creams in there they got like frozen popsicles on a stick, uh, exotic flavors I got like a fruit salad that was amazing yeah, it was so good really really enjoyed it and since we've been there they've opened up right next door the same family has opened up this Mexican restaurant here. So we're going to be coming back here probably sometime maybe in January. Yeah, we got a lot going on in December and that's called Mole, Mole, I don't know how to pronounce that. But uh, we're going to come back and do a review here. Uh, we've heard it's really good. We've heard it's really good. So uh, that will be a future review coming up. Gonna be my Christmas present this year. Your Christmas present. All wrapped with a pretty bow. Yeah. Right, folks, that's what I'm getting for Christmas this year. Yeah.
Good evening everybody. We are continuing our tour of some small towns in North Carolina during the Christmas season. And right now we are in probably the most famous one of all for Christmas lights. We are in the town of McAdenville, North Carolina. And the nickname of this town is Christmas Town USA for good reason and you're going to see why. Uh, this is probably the most decorated town in the state of North Carolina. It's also one of the top places in the country to see Christmas lights. So instead of driving through and having to take about three hours to get through a small town uh, with a lot of traffic, we have parked at the Mac McAddenville Elementary School and we're going to walk through tonight. Uh, lightly raining, light drizzle, but uh, we're going to do it anyway and we're going to try to bring you a good video of the Christmas lights here in McAddenville. Now this little town is located off of Interstate 85 between Gastonia and Charlotte and that's really all it's known for is Christmas lights. So. Uh, we're going to walk through town tonight and show you what they got here, so stay with us. Okay, looking back up at the elementary school as you first come into the south end of town uh, off of Highway 74. We decided to come in the, bottom, the back way tonight because coming in off the interstate is a nightmare. So we actually got on 74 from Gastonia. And we are coming in the south end of town, but this is just at the edge. And as you can see, even out here, we haven't even gotten to the main part of town yet. And they plant Christmas trees for their trees lining in the sidewalk. So again, we are in the town of McAdenville, North Carolina. It's actually been several years since we've been here. Um, uh, we've been going to Tanglewood a lot. We're still going to be doing that, but we haven't been to McAdenville in a long time, so. Uh, obviously never done a video here, but that's what we're going to do tonight. Alright, our first thing we're going to do is walk down Academy Street, and some of these homes are, quite honestly, beautifully decorated. And this is one of the streets uh, to the left of the roundabout at the south end of town. I've got everybody going to the right. I don't know if they come back up this way. Oh, well, the there's not a lot of traffic on this street, but uh, from what I read, mm -hmm. You should walk this streets. That's what we're doing, and I see why. Oh, look up in their window. They got like a little movie. Yes, they do.
So this is Academy Street, and we're going to walk back to the roundabout now and go down another street. And then we'll go down Main Street and take you to the lake that goes to town. Just looking back up Academy Street, it looks very, very festive and good. Okay, we are now walking down Church Street, uh, still not on the main drag yet. Some of these houses are just, look at this one, look at this house here. Get a little closer view of that. I'll get a little closer in a minute and give you a straight across shot. Look at that. I guess my only complaint about this house is that they got that big tree kind of blocking it, but that's probably the best we've seen so far. And again, this is Church Street in McAdenville, North Carolina. Cedar Street, that wasn't one that I had planned, but it looks really uh, nicely decorated, so let's walk down Cedar Street now. Okay, we've made it back to the roundabout now. We have been down Academy Street, Church Street, and Cedar Street. So now we're gonna go down the main stretch down towards the lake. So, so far, very impressive, and we haven't really even gotten into the main part yet. Definitely worth a visit. Yeah, I'm very glad we decided to do it on foot tonight. Traffic does seem to be diminishing a little, but... Uh, yeah, you can't go down every street, or I don't know that you can't, but people aren't. They're just going through the main park. So we've actually got to walk the side streets. Uh, I would definitely, huh? A lot of people are doing that. Actually. Yeah, I would definitely recommend if you come here to do it on foot. This is the first time we've ever done it on foot. 
we've always just driven through and we missed a lot by doing that so uh, do it on foot park uh, we parked at the elementary school it's free parking there's several free parking places in town uh, we parked at the elementary school got out and just started walking down Main Street towards the lake. Again, there's still a moderate amount of traffic. This is a Thursday night. Uh, if you come on a Friday or Saturday night, you can expect once you get off of Interstate 85 to wait an hour and a half or two hours. And that's not fun. So we came in the south end tonight from Highway 74, parked, got out and walked, and we've been able to see everything we want to see. So looking down Main Street. Folks, right here is what it's about. It's not about just lights, even though we love coming to see them. It's about this passage of scripture right here out of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I don't know if you can see that. I'm zoomed up as far as I can go without getting in their yard. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And obviously the birth of the Savior is what we remember most this time of year, whether he was born this time of year or not. Nobody knows that. Um, but that is what we focus on, that Christ came into a world to save sinners. is trespassing. How do you know you're not? Okay, I guess these people on, on this house put this sleigh out here for you to sit in, so. I see a little electric train, and I love electric trains, so I'm gonna have to get closer to that. And actually, I said this was Main Street. It's actually Wesleyan Drive, but it goes down into the main area, so. So what are these Southern Charm rides? I guess you, I'll take you on a little tour. That's a pretty neat way to see it. Yeah, it is. Kids tell us Merry Christmas from their vehicle. All right, folks, we're getting down by the lake now, and lots of trees out in the lake.
Now I do want to make you aware that right here is the McAddenville Fire Station. And right across the street from there, there's a nice little area here along the lake to get some nice photo and video. Uh, so we're going to walk over in here. I know I've shown you the lake several times already, but just directly across the street. Closer to the town hall, you can hear the bells playing. It's like a little ice cream parlor over there. I don't really know what McCaddenville has as far as stores. We don't ever come any other time. Just a little small town that's famous for Christmas. Okay, so we're going to pause and listen to a little bit of the music here because the rain has started again and she has an umbrella, I do not. I want to keep the camera dry. I do, I didn't carry it because I was carrying the camera. But So we're going to pause here just a few minutes and walk up this street here. We thought we were about done, but got another whole street of lights to look at. So.
McCaddenville. It says this is one of the two propellers that pro, uh, powered an electric turbine. Oh, wow. To see it. So we actually came here. Pull the umbrella back a little bit. Let me see that. All right. So Thomas Edison was here. And he's got invented the light bulb, ain't it? I think so. I guess that's appropriate. He would come here then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> One final shot here of the street entering into McCaddenville from the north. We're on the opposite end of town from where we parked. We're walking back to our van now, but uh, a lot of lights here. A lot more than I remember. From, we haven't been hit through here in, what, 10 years probably yeah, or more. Yeah, it's and it's really, really done up. So I can see why this is called Christmas Town, USA. Oh, yeah. McCaddenville, North Carolina. Okay, folks, we are back in our van, and we're going to do now a drive-through since the um, traffic has pretty much let up for the night, and the lights are going to be going off here in town before long. We're actually just going to drive back through town. It, we did our walk-through. Uh, we're going to drive through now and let you see it from a vehicle. I do apologize in advance for the windshield wipers. I'll use them as sparingly as I have to, but I am going to have to. Um, so just to let you see what McCaddenville looks like as you're driving through. Then after we get to the edge of town, we're going to give you our final thoughts on it. So, just enjoy the drive.
Okay, everybody, we just um, got done at McCaddenville. I hope you enjoyed uh, the last part of this video. We basically, um, the reason we did the video this way with uh, several North Carolina towns is that two weeks ago we went up to the town of Silva, North Carolina. We had heard there were some really good lights there. There really were not, except for one spot that we've shown you, the Jackson County Courthouse. We didn't want to not include that, but there wasn't really much else in that area to include. So what we decided we would do is make a video where we visit uh, four towns uh, in North Carolina for Christmas and um, just put them all together. We saved what we believe is the best for last. So we want to give you our thoughts on McCaddenville. Shaughnessy, why don't you uh, tell about what you thought of it and your experience there tonight? Well, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um... I would definitely recommend walking through it um, because some of the streets that we walked down, um, you can't drive down it. There's actually signs there saying you can't do it unless you're a resident with a permit. Um, so you did get to see a lot of the lights walking. Um, you know, it was kind of a little rainy this evening, so that was kind of yucky. But you know, but as far as you know, just feeling festive and enjoying the lights, it's very nice. It's it's worth a trip. It's worth a see to do. So I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I did. We had. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, and a lot of houses were just beautiful the way they did yeah. their lots and decorations. Yeah, this is the first time I think we went to McCaddenville once when we were dating, maybe mm -hmm. once since we've been married, maybe ten years ago. Um, I don't remember it being as nice as it was tonight. It was really I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more lights than I remember, and I think part of it is what she said that. Uh, when you drive through, you miss the streets you can walk down. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways, maybe more, but two ways I know of to get into McAddenville. Uh, it is located between Gastonia and Charlotte, closer to Gastonia. It's in Gaston County. And, you know, it, it has the nickname Christmas Town USA for a reason. Uh, and it really, really lived up to that tonight. Now, you can come in off of Interstate 85. If you're going to come in that way, I recommend doing it through the week and not on a weekend. We have seen what it's like. On, that's one of the reasons we haven't been back so many years. It's, it's a pain to get in and out of there. So tonight, I decided to try to come in the south end. That's Highway 74 Franklin Boulevard uh, from Gastonia. And um, it was somewhat packed when we got there, but it was a lot easier to get in. And we parked at the McAdenville Elementary School, which is near where we came in off of Highway 74 on Wesleyan, uh, Wesleyan Drive. Uh, that's how you get in from the south end and the school was less than a mile from there So we were able to find parking at the school. It's free parking. Mm -hmm. There's several free parking places But I think that's the one I would recommend and from there we got out and walked It's just a, a stone's throw to the roundabout now uh, What she was saying about some of the streets you can't drive down unless you live there uh, You can walk down them and mm -hmm. you miss if you just drive through McAdenville you miss those streets and there are some Beautifully decorated homes. I, I can't emphasize that enough. So most definitely get out and walk um, And the streets uh, at the roundabout are Academy Help me on this church street Cedar well Cedar Branched off of church street. It wasn't oh. right at the roundabout But on either side of the roundabout is Academy Street and Church Street You want to do both of those and then once you go on Church Street turn down Cedar Street okay. uh, Some uh, very very nice houses there. Yeah, and then come back to the roundabout and just make your way down through town uh, and then once you pass the lake, turn left, and there's a lot more to see, as you saw tonight. So I, I was very, very happy with uh, the experience. It's yeah. about an hour from where we live down here, maybe a little less, but um, roughly an hour from where we live, uh, probably 15, 20 minutes from Charlotte and about 10 minutes from Gastonia. So if you're in this area, southern North Carolina, southwestern North Carolina, between Charlotte and Gastonia at Christmas time, you got to experience McAdenville. Very, very beautiful. Yeah, um, very nice. You saw it for yourself. So, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this whole video. We did We did try to save the best for last. So, uh, if you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. And find us on Facebook. And we appreciate it. Thank you and uh, have a blessed day.